Welcome to this introductory session on the migration cockpit in both SAP S4 HANA Cloud and also SAP S4 HANA On-Premise. Right now you can see I'm already in the Fiori Launchpad. If you do not know how to navigate to the Launchpad, please first watch my other video about the quick introduction to SAP Fiori. As of SAP S4 HANA 2021, we do not utilize the GUI transaction LTMC anymore, but we go via Fiori application for migrating data. The transaction is called migrate your data. So let's just type in migrate your data over here. You can see we got actually two applications over here. This one, migrate your data migration cockpit old, is only used to display projects that we created in the past via LTMC transaction in the ZAP GUI. And we can still display them over here. But what we normally use is the Migrate Your Data Migration Cockpit application. So let's click on this one. And here we can see the landing page. Over here you can see that a couple of projects have already been finished. We can search for already existing projects. But for now let's actually click on Create. Yeah, and this is a guided procedure. So over here we can see the general data. The migration approach, there's only one available, which is called migrate data using staging tables. Those staging tables are to be filled with data, either via template files that we will see in a minute, or we can also fill the staging tables with our preferred tools. So for instance, with the ZAP data services. And what happens is in the end that the migration cockpit creates those staging tables for our migration objects that are relevant for our project. We will select them in a minute and then migrate the data from the staging tables to the S4HANA target system. We need to provide a name, let's say test migration project new. And then over here you can see the mass transfer ID. It was already filled by the system automatically. However, if we want, we can also change the mass transfer ID. It must start with an M N or an O though. Then you can see over here database connection. If you want the system to create the staging tables in the local ABAP schema of the S4HANA system, then we select the option local SAP HANA database schema. If we want the system to create the staging tables in a different SAP HANA schema, then we would select the option remote SAP HANA database schema and then we must enter over here valid database from the drop down menu. In my case there is none connected right now. So we will select local SAP S4HANA database schema. Then we click on step two. Now it's time to select our available migration objects. So for instance, let's say we want to migrate bank accounts. I click here on bank, select this one. I could also select other ones if needed. And then I click here on the arrow to select the migration object. You can see it now disappeared from the list of available migration objects and move to the selected migration objects over here. For some of the migration objects, you might see a predecessor, meaning that we could click on this one button and you can see before we can migrate, for instance, the batch unique at material and client level, the object's characteristics, class, object classification, product and supplier must already have been migrated. For our bank, we have no predecessor, so this is fine. You can also see here for each and every object, we have a documentation. Let's actually click on this one. We are forwarded to the ZAP help page where we receive more information on that particular migration object. Let's click on back and then we click on review. Here we can check again what we selected. So this is fine and we will click on create project. You can see that the new migration project called test migration project new has been created and the status not started is applied. We will now access this project by just clicking on the line and here we can see our migration object, in this case the bank master data. Over here you can see running activities, so this will change depending on what we execute on the migration cockpit. We have some monitoring settings over here, but most importantly we have the button download template. Let's actually click on this one. We download it as an XML file. We can see it's downloaded over here, let's double click on this one. And we are forwarded to an Excel file that consists of three different worksheets. One with the introduction. So this gives us some information, for instance, about how big the file can get for the upload. Then we have the field list. So all the relevant key fields with their type and also their maximum length. And then most importantly here, the marked in yellow, 
we have a table that we need to fill. One important hint you can see over here, some rows have been hidden. So let's actually unhide them, displaying the technical fields and also some character information. For now, let's just fill the entries marked with an asterisk. So the bank country region, let's say DE for instance, then the bank key and the name. Test bank for migration X, something like that. And this is sufficient for now. Let's save this one. And this file we can now close and click here on upload file. We can now either drop the file over here or also click on upload, which would redirect us to our local computer. For now, let me just drop it. We can see the success message, data successfully transferred to the staging tables. By the way, this might take a couple of seconds for the status to appear. We can actually click on show messages and you can see the file source for bank data was imported successfully. Now let's go back. We can now see that we have here one table, one instance and a new action called prepare. So the migration data has been loaded. However, now the staging tables need to be prepared. So we click on prepare. We can also include a consistency check over here by toggling over this button. However, you can see here as we have used the template files, the system has already performed the consistency check. So this is unnecessary and we can click on prepare staging tables. After a couple of seconds or even minutes, depending on the size of your file, we will have the next action item called mapping tasks. Let's actually click on this one. And you see we have two mappings that we need to maintain. One for the mapping of the bank key and the other one for the mapping of the country region key. Let's click on the first one. Over here we need to confirm the S4HANA target value. So in this case the bank key and this is fine. Why could this ever deviate mail? You could imagine that we transfer data from a different system and maybe we want the target value, so the real bank key here with another number in comparison to the value that came from the other system. Then we could change it over here. But for now we say confirm and we do the same for the second mapping task. So here it's about the country, so this can also be confirmed. So all mapping tasks have now been confirmed, we click on back. And now we have here the next task called simulate. Let's click on this one and we can now simulate the migration. So as we have only one master data entry to be created, we can click on all instances. However, if we have a bunch of migration data, so let's say thousands of bank accounts, then it would make sense to select, for instance, a random number, 10% of the total amount to be migrated or a random 500 instances or a custom selection to simulate how the system would behave without writing to the database. So for now we say all instances and start simulation. We can now see that the simulation was successful. We can even click on the one over here. Then we see our bank account. Let's actually click on this one. And here we can see the entry in the table. So this is how it would look like then in the end. So this is fine. Let's go back twice and click on migrate. Now we are actually going to migrate the data. So we click on all instances, start migration. There's a warning message as this can't be undone, but we are sure. So we click OK. The file has been uploaded successfully. The migration project is now 100%. So this is basically it. Now we can inspect our newly created bank account. In this case via the app Manage Banks. This one over here, click on it. Insert a bank key, in our case 500-719. Hit on enter and go. And we can see the bank has successfully been migrated. We can even inspect the details. And now we see at least the information we filled, so the bank ID, the country, yeah. And this concludes a simple migration project. I hope you liked the video. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to not miss any more content. You would really help me with that and it only takes two seconds. Thanks a lot. See you next time.